when you go to Palestine and you say to them, what can we do to help? They say, just keep protesting, we're watching you. You know, keep marching, keep demonstrating, keep doing what you're doing because you give us hope. The little group that I'm with, we spend two weeks supporting small villages on the West Bank. And what we do is we help pick the olive harvest. It's a really, really important part of their daily lives, their existence. They don't just produce olive oil, they produce soap, washing powder. Even the press bits that they can't use in the oil are used for fertilizer and things. So they utilize every part of the olive. If you're an olive farmer, you have to get a permit from the Israelis to pick your own olives on your own land, especially if you're near the settlements. The settlements are on the top of the hillside and the villages for the Palestinians are underneath these settlements. The settlers stand on top of the hills looking down on us whilst we're picking the olives and they throw stones. They're allowed to carry guns from a really young age, so we've been shot at and chased round. Each one's picked by hand. There's no machinery. We have to lay out the tarps, climb the trees, pick the olives, bag up all the olives, and then they're run by hand down to the vans waiting at the bottom of the hills. And you know you've got to get these olives in because you've only got a very, very short period of time to harvest these olives. So the pressure is tremendous. You're standing there in this boiling hot heat and the settlers are throwing the stones at you and you're just picking the olives as fast as you can. You can feel the anxiety and the panic. You, your throat gets dry, but you just keep picking, you know? You've just got to get them in. You've got to harvest those olives. They burn the groves. And what they do is if they don't farm the land, then the land is taken away from them because they're not using it. But how can you farm your land, A, if you're not allowed on it, and B, if they've burnt your groves? Raw sewage that's untreated runs in rivers from those settlements. The stench is appalling. It's just shit and piss rolling down the hillside. And they're doing it deliberately to poison the land. We record all the incidents, which we then send to the United Nations, which are filed with hundreds of other reports that we've sent in every year. And these are crimes against humanity, but nothing is ever done. Tell the story, give the Palestinians hope for a better life. From Kashmir to Palestine, occupation is a crime. From Kashmir to Palestine, occupation is a crime. Indian Army, out, out. Indian Army, out, out. Indian Army, out, out. Kashmir and Palestine, we call them twin countries because the issues with them started at the same time and Israel is supplying them with, with, with all the modern weapons so, so, so they can control the Kashmiris and they're actually doing a genocide in simple words because they don't want Kashmiris, they just want the land. We want freedom! 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 Indian Army! Out! Indian Army! Out! Indian Army! Indian Army! From Kashmir to Palestine, occupation is a crime. From Kashmir to Palestine, occupation is a crime. India, what he's done, he's taken over Kashmir and is demanding Pakistan to give the little part which was given to Pakistan, and they're doing genocide. Every day we have women raped. Children have been killed from the age of 3 to 15. Men have been killed, no, tortured. No, no, no. Indian army is increasing day by day. 10 Kashmiris, there's one army officer. Every 15 minutes, there's a check post. They're not allowed to go out. They're not allowed to do anything. And they're not allowed to communicate with the world. If they get caught on the internet, on social media, they put them away in, in, in prison. They can be kept away for two years without the family, anybody having any contact. And they can take them out, put them back again. Trees have been cut. People's jobs have been taken away. And now they're trying to bring in Indian people to come and settle, same like Israel. Majority of Kashmiris on both sides want to be with Pakistan. Some of them think that maybe they should have their own country, but majority is with Pakistan and India doesn't like that. So the only solution is that there has to be a referendum. We asked to actually go through the plebiscite which you promised the United Nations. One, two, three, four. Kashmir and Palestine, the arms have been sold from England, from Oldham factory, which actually been supplied to the Israeli and Indian governments. The UK government needs to stop that. Protesting, good, you know, writing petition. I think we need to go further. Uh, we need to go further and I saluted the people who took the, the factories, the roof of the drone factories. 
all over the country. We have um, Albert factory, which is Israeli owned factory, not far from Birmingham in Litchfield. We just had a protest outside, since what happened in, in Palestine. The security start to push in people out of the public pavement. They use ex-police expert David Bird. He's responsible for a lot of environment uh, activists behind bar. He claiming that that public pavement is private. I was pushed and kicked and I've got a sustained uh, injuries on my face. That happened in front of the police. They allowed them to harass us. Exactly. The way how the police were standing by allowing and actually assisting thugs to, to push peaceful protesters, it's just beyond the belief. Workers have so much duty and so much power and, and urge the trade unions to actually act on it. Apartheid South Africa, they stop handling the goods. We want to see a similar action. We want to see workers refusing to handle goods that they definitely know it's going to Israel, to kill Palestinian or to India or to Saudi Arabia to kill people in Yemen, my country. I come from a community called the Tigrayan community. More than 1,000 of us came to Cornwall in order to demonstrate against the atrocities that's happening in Tigray, back home in Ethiopia. People are being murdered, uh, women are being gang raped, innocent children are executed. It is genocide, ethnic cleansing, similar to the one that happened in Rwanda and other places. The internet is cut off, there is no telecommunication, there is ethnic profiling, Every Tigrayan now cannot have a job. They don't have any source of income. Basically, the country is now lawless. Every single day, innocents are being killed. The person instigating this war is the current Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Ali Ahmed. He has not been elected. He does not have mandate. We have in excess of 85 ethnic cities with different culture and language. So the idea of the previous political party was to give everybody both economical and political representation. Tigray is the cornerstone of Ethiopia. It meant to be the founder of the Ethiopian nation as we know it. The Tigrayans have their own regional election and the political party won fair and square. But because they stood for federalism, whereby every ethnicity is represented, the government actually declared war on the people. So what he did was he invited the Eritrean government to invade the region in order to claim the land. And people are now fighting because you have no option. Now nearly five million people are in danger of starvation because famine is being used as a weapon of war in order to bring these people to their knees. They block the road that goes to Tigray. They are stopping humanitarian aid and they are forcing people not to plow the land. It is an agrarian society. So if they plow the land, they will be able to feed the people that's fighting in the war. The current government has plans to sell out all the state-owned property and the West supports that. The International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, have actually explicitly congratulated the Ethiopian government. Recently, for example, Ali Hamed sold the Ethiopian Telecom to Vodafone for 850 million. Now, that money will be used to buy weapons of mass destruction, to kill innocent people. So we went to headquarters of Vodafone to demonstrate. So we shall continue to campaign and demonstrate until Tigray prevails and the persons committing these atrocities are held accountable. Occupation law!